data suite is successful so this tutorial is not aimed at explaining you how the test ng functions okay what are the annotations uh, i personally pref uh, ask the followers to go to the test ng site and learn a basics about test ng so the, the test ng eclipse plugin uh, helped us to run the test ng suit uh, where we the selenium commands executed against the rc server the rc server opened the browser and executed the commands to open the site home page and the rest of the stuff so now uh, let me debug this so that you can uh, see one by one how, how the browser is opening and step by step let me do right click and uh, select the toggle breakpoint and deep run debug as test ng test this is the way you can debug the step by step test case if when you are debugging is one of the powerful way uh, that helps you if you are running into any problems so now the test ng test case is running in a debug mode the Eclipse ID is recommending us to switch the Eclipse workspace into a debug mode. Click S to open the debug perspective. So in the debug perspective, you will get the breakpoints and all the necessary things. Now you can see uh, the first which uh, step or test case that is executing is open the browser. Click on F6 and uh, you can see the browser got or the well or the welcome page got opened after that it is doing the series of verifications so this is the way uh, you can have a better control over the test case execution if you run into some problems simply toggle a breakpoint right click and run it in the debug mode and uh, you can easily fix the problems th that occurred in the test suit the complicated test suit which i recorded using the selenium IDG and tweaked them according to my need now if you see this test suit login test suit will open the login page and click on the login page sorry welcome the open the welcome page click on the login link and the wait for method it waits for at max 30 seconds uh, uh, to get the response from the server after that it will key in the username and password and click on the submit button and verify whether user successfully logged in or not so this test suit welcome we uh, opens the welcome page type keys in the username and password and clicks on submit button and go to home page of the user and verify whether the user is successfully logged in or not the simple way to do it is right click select run as and click on the test ng test and the test cases starts running here you can see the server is listening and it is opening the firefox browser and running the test cases the firefox browser is got open and keyed in the values and verified for the thing so this test case was successfully passed in this manner you can automate uh, all the test cases or you can automate all your web application using selenium so now let's go to a bit detail into selenium commands terminology and uh, what are the best ways to organize your test cases hi let's go in detail of uh, selenium id and components uh, as we discussed, uh, the Selenium consists of three main components, which is a Selenium IDE and an RC control. This is the remote control server which is running 
and uh, selenium grid uh, you might get more information about selenium grid uh, in the selenium site uh, let us concentrate only on the selenium ide and the selenium server now we have a selenium server running and uh, selenium ide which we have as now uh, let us see what a selenium command we already know that a selenium executes a set of commands against the selenium server a typical command consists of three things a command and a target and a value so a command can take two parameters or one parameter for example a click command will take the target like link equal to login uh, where it executes the click command over it now let us see a verified text it is a command which verifies whether a particular text the h1 element has a value download or not so these are the uh, typically commands can be classified in a three ways actions which perform particular action and accessors which will help you to read the element contents of that element and assertions uh, which will help you to uh, validate a particular uh, data was present or not so a, a simple asset title a simple assertion which will help you to see whether the welcome page title is welcome or not so a click command which will execute uh, a click on the login link i mean a typical a anchor tag so most of the cases uh, we record the test cases and format them as an java program and execute so all the in most of the scenarios the things goes very well but in typical cases what happens is uh, if the test cases get failed that may repeatedly happen by uh, when the developers are doing the development they might change the uh, alignment of the components or component ids so these are the cases uh, which typically comes where your test case file fails and you need to fix the test case so in in those cases uh, the simple way uh, for you to identify whether a particular element is available or not in a particular location you need to have different tools now i'll show you i have a uh, in it i have a fire bug uh, which is a, a utility which will help you to identify uh, this type of uh for example if for example uh, if the developer changed the text field name let us see in this login page uh, you created the test case in this manner and you observe that id of username is changed by the developer like username 2 and your test case got failed because the element is not identified in such case you can rely upon the uh, html debugger tools like firebug which comes with a sel as a selenium sorry as an firefox plugin you install it you right click and you say inspect element so it will show you that the element id e so this is a way you can easily identify any particular right click and you can say inspect element which will navigate you to the element so another simple thing is instead of changing the code and uh, uh, modifying it you can always use a selenium id now let let me sh show you like i want to identify the element username like for the click command i want to identify the username so here you can see the element username is identified by the selenium id so it which is very easy for you to find the elements now come back to the agenda so what are the best practices uh, while you are automating a selenium id sorry selenium test cases you need to identify most of the cases you need to identify the elements by their id so have the static ids for each and every element and identify the elements by their id so this is a one of the best way 
if you are having a dynamic ids you can go with an xpath identifier or the way uh, use most tools like firebug web developer and xpath viewer which will help you to identify uh, the elements in the html and in most of the cases while you are automating so you should have an util methods like a login util which will automate only the login test cases and home page util which will automate only the home page test cases and this those util method should be run independently then you have a wrapper like test cases where which will call login test cases and home page test cases so you can jumble them across to create your test suite and a test driver uh, it's nothing but an xml or uh, a small text file which will execute the test case test cases so you need to have a test driver uh, where you write or where you declare your test cases and test cases will call little methods and little methods executes the test cases so this is a way you can organize your test cases so for the benefit of others uh, i deployed the application as a google app in the google app engine at uh, balaji ipan selenium tutorial app spot.com where you can access the current web application which i demoed in uh, in this tutorial uh, at last but not the least uh, i want to thank ca technologies and uh, their cloud computing division where i allowed to work with them thanks have a nice day bye